Hi, good afternoon. I am uh, Rulin Van Dyke uh, with Agilent ESOF, uh, working in the system simulation area. I would like to talk about uh, simulation of phased array radars and some of the design challenges uh, that designers face. Uh, as you know, the tolerances uh, are becoming tighter and uh, it's expensive to do field tests, of course. I mean, you just don't go rent an airplane and, and start doing tests um, in the air. So what you'd like to do is do some of the simulation, some of the algorithm development, uh, some of the analysis before you get to the field. And even doing field measurements are a challenge. So some of the things that we're going to look at here is the transmit receive modules uh, and uh, the direct digital synthesizers that are used and the digital analog converters. And, and as you think about uh, the trends in phased arrays, they generally have been very passive and now they're going more to an active approach. And so now, now we're finding that uh, TR modules are associated with each element and that means uh, digital processing for each element, a DDS as a signal generating source and then an analog to digital converter on the back end. Uh, one of the other challenges that uh, individuals face is there's RF, of course, there's signal processing and, and how do we bring these together. And a lot of times the digital, the, the signal processing engineers and RF engineers uh, sometimes live in two different worlds. Calibration can also be difficult and challenging, uh, especially when we come to a large number of elements. So how do we streamline all this and, and bring all this together? So on the left, you see generally a, the, the a traditional approach, which is the passive antennas. And here, most everything in that schematic in that block diagram is RF. So you have a transmitter source, you have a high power amplifier, and then you're doing some sort of beam forming, of course, with some uh, digital control. And then the phase shifters and, of course, the antennas and all those are uh, at RF. So some of the challenges there are the isolation between the antennas. Now, if you, we look at the active antenna system, uh, this has got some nice ideas and nice concepts where we can have a TR module that's very localized and that we have for each particular element. But sometimes when the phased arrays have large number of elements, I mean, we're talking thousands of modules uh, that we need to uh, that we need to design for. And so what's the best way to balance out, you know, do you need a, is there a way that we can um, use the same digital to analog converter for several different TR modules and so forth? Of course, the beam forming here in this case is all done at baseband, and so the output coming out of the, the TR module, this is the one on the right, the active antenna, is all baseband. So all these things can be done at, uh, at a baseband level. All right, and so we have a platform uh, that we use to bring all of this together uh, for the active electronic steerable or scanning antennas. So of course, uh, the DUT is important and test equipment and being able to measure it, but that's kind of expensive to, um, when you get to that part, what you'd like to do is do as much as you can in the simulator ahead of time. And so of course, you're looking at algorithms for beam forming, uh, also uh, down conversion and what's the best way to break down the arrays, maybe large phased arrays, into smaller, uh, smaller arrays and then maybe doing some of the digital to analog conversion on, on smaller arrays or subarrays. Of course, the antenna patterns are important. Uh, they have side lobes and, and you want to be able to understand the impact that, they, that the side lobes have on when you're looking at a target and looking at reflections. What you'd really like to do is be able to prototype some of this. Also, looking at the RF in, in, uh, imperfections, right? What happens with uh, intercept point and noise and, and, and those sorts of things. And so we have an environment that where we can bring all of these uh, together. Uh, and so, you know, in the past, 
users maybe have used uh, uh, in the RF world um, a scanning oscillator. Well, some of the key models here would be a direct digital synthesizer. And then, of course, with the radar, we want to generate a certain type of pulse. And so with our DDS model here, you can select some of the types of signals and pulses that, that are commonly generated. Also, another important model is the radar cross-section. And there are lots of different types of radar cross-sections that are just, that are by default in this particular model. And so, of course, we can look at uh, the ground effects and the atmospheric losses, of course, the system losses, uh, ground reflection, polarization, and all the other things that are important when you're looking at radar. All right, we also, th there's clutter models that we can look at, um, look at the different characteristics of clutters, and the users can define what those, what those characteristics are. Uh, two other really important models here that um, seem pretty simple here, uh, but are very complicated uh, and very useful is the whole phased array. So in these particular models, you can actually specify what type of array you have, what the dimensions are of the array. You can even specify the, uh, the target angle and, and, uh, and be able to use these models to simulate uh, the direction of the, the, um, the radar. And then, of course, uh, beam steering. We have uh, e examples that show the signal processing and the other beam steering th that you, know, you want to look at and, and be able to use in the simulator. So this is just a simple uh, linear array of elements. And we see uh, the signals coming in at a particular look angle. And then, of course, you want to be able to look at what happens at, at all the different look angles. You know, where you're getting signals at, uh, at a side lobe. Maybe in the beam former, you want to be able to steer your beam so that you put a null at a particular location and be able to look at the effects of that. And then, of course, there's lots of measurements that we have uh, in the tool where we can actually look at the uh, antenna patterns. We can look at the... Um, uh, the different side load, side lobe levels, and of course, we integrate with uh, MATLAB. So if you have IP, and a lot of customers have IP uh, in this area, we can bring the, that type of IP into the tool and be able to use it to do the simulation. Okay, uh, one of the other things that's really important is uh, RF co-simulation. So in this particular example, on the spectrum on the left is uh, frequency hopping. So we see a signal at 1.3 gigahertz, 1.5, and I think 1.7. So we want to be able to generate that, that sequence and be able to uh, analyze or co-simulate with our RF. Well, we have a waveform composer sequencer, which is uh, also used with the instruments where we can actually take simulated waveforms, we can construct those waveforms, and then we can sequence those out through actual hardware. So you can do it in the software as well as uh, in the hardware. Then we have our little RF block here in the middle, uh, which you see at the top, we support X parameters. So if you have an X parameter file, you can co-simulate with that. Uh, also. Uh, with, there's behavioral models if you want to start it and look at that level. And then also we can co-simulate with, with ADS. Now on the very right you see a sync. Uh, and you won't be able to read those words, but it says VSA. This is uh, uh, the vector signal analyzer software that we sell with both the, the hardware and also with system view. And you can buy it for uh, the software. So you can use the same simulation analysis so software with the, this phased array simulation as well as with the actual hardware. So you're using the same uh, type of equipment and software to look at you know, different aspects, EVM and various 
uh, digital demodulation aspects of the signal. All right. Uh, we are integrated very tightly with the, with the hardware. And so, like I said, we, we can generate signals, drive it into a signal generator, be able to run those into your device under test, and then be able to analyze uh, those those particular waveforms, and then you can compare it to the simulation results. And so all of this helps, you know, when, you, when you're trying to look at uh, detection rates and false alarm rates and, and looking at complex signals, uh, looking at linearity, maybe you want to do uh, uh, digital pre-distortion. So uh, here's uh, a, a little simple example where we're comparing the algorithms for two digital down converters. And this is, um, so you see at the top uh, the co-simulation with uh, ADS. And then on the far left, is a, there's a little picture there of multiple, uh, multiple transceiver modules. And so the little graph at the bottom on the right shows the, the difference in the air rate uh, comparing the two different uh, digital down converter algorithms. And so this will help you make a better choice uh, before you actually get to the, the, you know, the hardware. In this uh, particular example, what we're, what we're doing is we're doing uh, active air correction. So there's a reference channel that we have and, and then our main channel. And we can develop algorithms to compare the amplitude and the phase error and then do the correction. So you see on the graph on the lower right, uh, the red trace is the original signal without the error correction. And then once the algorithms th that we've developed and, and are put in place and we want to test, you know, once we, we run those through the systems, then we see the blue trace at the output, see the correction. All right, uh, in this other example, what we have is we actually have two, in this particular case, two 16 by one uh, transmit arrays. And they both have beam formers. And then these beam formers are being combined together. And then uh, we have uh, two receivers. And basically what this shows is that uh, we're able to detect uh, these two uh, signals, and that's what we show here at the graph on the bottom. All right, so one, so the benefits of, of having a tool like this is you can look at trade-offs in the software and develop uh, am, the, your, all your al algorithms. L look for the phase and amplitude errors and, you know, be able to analyze the radar in its in a, a near um, real environment, as real as possible, looking at all the different imperfections and, and problems that, that uh, you face. Be able to look at w the effects of the antenna pattern and be able to uh, understand the impact that they have on the, on the phased array. And then, of course, you know, all the metrics that are used for phased arrays, the false alarm rate, the detection rate, and, and the whole purpose is to um, help you get to market sooner, be able to leverage the IP that you have with MATLAB or whatever else you have. All right, uh, if you have any additional questions, you can come uh, see us over at the Agilent booth. Thank you.